Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all safe and healthy. So today I am here at the Aston Martin dealership to take a look at the brand new DBX. I'll not be taking a look at this one. It's another one which I'm taking a look at. So Aston Martin DBX is obviously the first SUV to be produced by Aston Martin. So one thing everyone knows is that SUVs bring a lot of money and a lot of money can help uh, make better projects like uh, for example what is going currently at the aston martin i mean what is going on currently at the aston martin uh, that's the uh, valhalla valkyrie vanquish that kinds of stuff and suvs like these do bring the money for aston martin uh, to help with that research so that is something i look forward to what aston martin again comes out in the future now the dbx itself uh, this one is the 2021 model here the 2022 model has not yet arrived there are just a few changes not a lot more but i have uh, mentioned that in the video so if you enjoy videos like these guys don't forget to leave a like and comment down below and also do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be the first ones to know when i upload the latest videos so now let's take a look at the car okay guys so here's the aston martin dbx this is the 2021 model year and we have it here in a metallic black color and uh, you can really see at the start uh, how the design resembles other aston martins in their lineup so most of the inspiration for the dbx is from the vantage so you can see how the grille uh, has the similar uh, size and uh, look uh, for the from the vantage overall in the vantage it is a bit lower and wider but here since it's an suv it's a bit higher up but it still looks really good then on the headlights front you can see a bit of a resemblance from the dbs superleggera so you have the same kind of uh, elements on the headlights and the way the headlights light up i will put up a short video right now so that you have an idea of how they look and also how the indicators look the indicators obviously are over here in the daytime running lamps but uh, they are also integrated with an air vent which is uh, meant for cooling the brakes so you have a functional air vent here and it is surrounded by the DRL and indicators also so most of the parking sensors on the front bumper are lower down here you can see that clearly and also you have your uh, radar sensor for all the cruise control systems and lane keeping assist so that's all the stuff then on the grill front now this one I believe has the black pack because of which you can see the Aston Martin logo is uh, in black. Uh, usually it has a green logo in the middle and the wings are uh, in white. And also on the grill these horizontal slats are usually in silver but uh, you can select them to be in black. So you have uh, these are in gloss black while the vertical slats are uh, matte black. Then again nothing much else to show on the front bumper itself. So that was the design on the front. And also one more thing I forgot to show you, you have your uh, camera for your 360 degrees and I wanted to show you the key, so here's the Aston Martin key, currently it's uh, in plastic but no problem, you have a glass element here with the Aston Martin logo itself, you have Aston Martin written here in their uh, font and it looks pretty good and it also has a bit of a weight to it and when I unlock the car it will show you again that's how the indicators and the LED lights work and you have your button for opening the tailgate and also locking it up again then on the hood itself there are some elements so it's not a nice flat hood it has uh, a lot of its uh, curves and design elements into it so you have this uh, heat extractors here obviously which help to remove hot air from inside the engine engine bay and also you have see, these wings it obviously helps again in aerodynamic efficiency it helps the to cut the air and make it smooth also the way the wings are designed on the hood they narrow down towards the wing or the badge over here then on the side itself let's take a look at the wheels so these are 22 inch wheels and these are in matte black and you have uh, yellow brake calipers and the brakes discs are around 410 millimeters and the brake calipers have six pistons in them so these ones like i said 22 inch wheels and they are sitting on 285 section tires and these are the pirelli p0s also the fact they have their uh, pirelli tires with the noise cancellation system also on this side this one is specific has this one out of 500 badge uh, so what that means is basically these are the first uh, 500 cars which are uh, manufactured from Aston Martin have this badge over here, 1 out of 500. I don't think they have any special uh, features or anything like that. It's just there 
to showcase or uh, promote that there these are the first 500 cars the only thing i think i believe you get is a build book which is signed by i believe andy palmer then on the side element over here you have these uh, functional vents again which help in improving the aerodynamic efficiency and also in the fronts these are the vents which i showed you there's a that are surrounded by the drls so for 2022 actually there is a new wheel option that's called uh, it's a 23 inch option i will put up a photo for you guys so that you know how it looks and personally they are a bit too big i think these 22 inch wheels does look pretty good so what else we have on the side the mirrors obviously are mounted on the doors so because of that you have a bit of a visibility from this quarter window here and i believe the indicators are also located here let me just unlock the car so you can see that clearly right over here and it that looks pretty good also you have your uh, camera here so that camera obviously is in works with the 360 degree camera so this one again since it has the black pack like i told you you have this uh, gloss black roof rails and also the window surround is in black and one more neat, uh, nice feature on the door handle itself you can see there are uh, led lights when you unlock the car they show up so that you can easily find the door handle in dark one feature that uh, aston martin has uh, brought from their uh, sports cars is how the door opens so on normal cars they open in just a plain flat way but uh, Aston Martin are famous for their swan doors so let me just open the door and show it to you so first things first they have actually made frameless uh, windows which I like a lot and also you have uh, double glazing which helps to provide insulation in the interior from outside noises and let me just show you how the door looks so this is how the door opens up obviously it's not flat from here it opens a bit upward so that uh, suppose if for example you park near a curb so by the door opening upwards it can help clear that curb but the amazing thing is that not only they have applied this uh, door style on the front doors it's also on the back doors so let me just show that to you so you can see even the back doors open upward so again they have the frameless uh, windows and they all uh, look pretty good and neat so that's something unique in the SUV market so let me just close this okay on the side itself one more thing I forgot to show actually on the door so the door does open all the way down so for some example uh, suppose uh, you bring this door or open it or while uh, driving through something muddy roads or something uh, the, obviously the side of the car will get dirty but uh, when you get out of the car this whole part obviously moves with the door this way it will be clean and when you come out of the car your uh, trousers or denims uh, won't get dirty because of the mud outside so that's a neat little touch so now let's come to the back of the car so at the back itself you have again 22 inch tires but they are even wider at the back you have 325 sections here and the brake discs here are around 390 millimeters i'm not sure about the caliper uh, pistons but uh, i believe it's four so that's how big the brake rotors are and it looks really good so now at the back itself you have a bit of an inspiration from the aston martin vantage is basically the vantage but a bit higher up so you have the led light which goes all the way to the side over there and since I said this has the black pack, you have Aston Martin written in black and also the wings at the back. One interesting thing about the badge is that Aston Martin make, decides the size of these badges according to the size of the car. So the Vantage does have the smallest wing and since the DBX is their uh, biggest vehicle, they have the largest wing badge on it. Again, you have a ducktail spoiler integrated over here and you have another roof spoiler which is integrated here so you can see how the roof uh, I mean the roof spoiler is opened up to provide downforce a bit at high speeds and because of that they don't have any rear windscreen wiper because Aston Martin says that due to the design of the back the, and how the wind flows over here at the back they don't need a wiper all the water will just go away so I will put up another uh, video of how the rear lights look later on so we'll check that out later but for now we'll uh, take a look at the boot space so we open the boot you, you have a button over there and as well we have a button on the boot and also there's another way to open the boot you can just uh, kick down here move your foot and it should open 
but for some reason it's not doing that okay so but i'll just open it via the key so there we go it's obviously electrically operated so there we go it opens all the way so this one uh, the total amount of space you have is like around 630 liters of space i believe so it's bigger than most of its rivals and uh, and the rivals obviously include the lamborghini urus the porsche cayenne turbo and the bentley bentega to some extent so you have 630 liters of space all flat floor there's no uh, issue of loading space and aston martin do sell you a luggage uh, a customized luggage which will uh, have the leather according to your uh, interior so that way you can have uh, the customized luggage which fits perfectly in this boot space also then at the back you have a few buttons so let me just turn on the flash for that okay so you have two buttons so these two buttons obviously help to fold down the rear uh, seats uh, if in case you need more space you can do that and you have a few buttons over here which help to increase the height of the air suspension that's on this car so if you have some heavy items which you cannot pick up and put it inside you can lower the car from here and then you can easily load the items also one thing the load cover over here is uh, in leather and it feels really nice to the touch and feels also high quality so one more thing uh, you have uh, the buttons for your uh, closing the tailgate they are taken from uh, mercedes it's a result of their um, partnership with mercedes so there are a lot of bits from them and I will show that to you later. First, let me close down the tailgate. Okay, another thing about the back tailgates, normally you get uh, red tail lights, but this one has the smoked option. So because of that, you get these uh, clear tail lights. And let me just show you a bit of the, uh, when I unlock it, how it, they look. So that's how they look all the way. Then we come down on the bumper itself. So the bumper uh, has been designed uh, to look obviously as close to an Aston Martin sports car as possible and you have huge exhaust tips. You have some nice uh, details inside the exhaust as well. So you have the surround here and you have the actual exhaust inside. It's a switchable exhaust system uh, which activates according to the drive modes. Then you have some nice hexagon patterns here which again make the rear look unique. You can get uh, carbon fiber here on this car, but uh, I mean on this part of the car. And uh, also you get an additional diffuser when if you go for that carbon pack. But I think uh, with how clean this looks in gloss black, uh, this is the option to go for. Obviously that diffuser is not going to help much if you don't take the car to the track. So that's how this looks. So now that we have taken a look at the exterior of the car, I think it's time we take a look at the engine bay. So let me just to open the boot, I mean the hood. Okay, so one interesting thing, uh, to open the bonnet or hood, the hood latch is actually on the opposite side for us here in Saudi Arabia because uh, we have the steering wheel on the left side. But uh, since Aston Martins are built in UK and you have right hand drive there, uh, you have the hood latch here. So that's how you open the hood. There we go. So now let's take a look at the hood. So here's the engine bay of the Aston Martin DBX. So it has a sort of a clamshell bonnet because the bonnet obviously comes all the way to the side. So let's talk engine. So this engine is obviously derived from uh, or actually taken from Mercedes AMG. Uh, they have their famous 4 liter twin turbo V8 which are used in a lot of vehicles as well as Aston Martin uses them in the Vantage and the DB11 itself. So this 4 liter V8 or twin turbo V8, you can see the hot turbos inside. So that is a hot V configuration. That means the two turbos sit inside the, the two cylinder banks. So you have Aston Martin written here. You have a 4 liter twin turbo V8. The, the first 500 cars, uh, launch cars. So you have uh, this plaque which we will get on all the other 500 cars as well. So handmade in Wales, final inspection by Andy Palmer, the CEO of Aston Martin. So that's something unique. Also you have your air suspension component for the front over here. Also let's talk about the power of the engine now. So this uh, twin turbo V8 in the DBX produces 542 horsepower and around 515 pound foot of torque. That's like 700 newton meters of torque. And it is attached to a 9 speed automatic transmission that is again taken from Mercedes AMG. So one thing that's different between the Aston version of this uh, V8 is that they have uh, tweaked the firing order of the car and also there are some software changes because of which it sounds pretty different uh, from the AMG variants of this engine. And we'll take a listen to that uh, exhaust note 
just a bit so you can really hear how different it sounds from the AMG V8. So that's all there is to show in the engine bay and some performance stats. So from 0 to 100, this SUV can go in four and a half seconds and it tops out at around 101 miles per hour. That's like 290 kilometers per hour. Pretty good performance numbers, but it does obviously fall short from its competitors. That's the Lamborghini Urus and the Porsche Cayenne Turbo, Bentley Bentayga, etc. Because they have uh, like 600 above horsepower. But uh, what Aston Martin has is that uh, they have the exclusivity and the craftsmanship and attention to detail that those brands lack a bit, not, the, not in the case of Bentley, but the others. The difference between the Aston and the uh, other uh, competitors is that the Aston is a uh, unique, uh, what do you say, chassis. It's built from the ground up, whereas the competitors, they use the same chassis with a bit of their uh, tweaks in them. So because of that, the designers are restricted to make some compromises, but here there were no compromises since Aston built this from the ground up. They had all the control of what they wanted to do with the interior as well as the packaging. So that's one thing. And also, something about the design I like about this Aston is how low it looks when compared to something like a Lamborghini Urus, which I've made a video on also. If you want to take a look at that video later on, I'll put a link in the description also. And uh, because of that, the Lamborghini obviously looked a bit higher, but uh, this looks low, a lot lower and a lot longer than the Lambo, even though it's shorter in length, but it does have a longer wheelbase. So that's something we'll experience when we sit inside. So now we'll take a look at the interior. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look at the interior of the car. So first things, I love how the door handles open on any Aston, for example. You have to just pull it from here and also they sit flush with the body because of which again improves the aerodynamics of the car. Then we're looking at the interior, it's actually a sea of uh, leather. Uh, there is very few metals inside. So you have soft touch leather all the way here. You have your stitching here. Again, you have leather here. You have more leather here. <laughs> Even the speaker grills are covered in leather. Uh, let me just uh, switch on the flash so you can see a bit more easily. So you have more leather here and even this part, lower part is in leather with the speaker again in leather. And again, like I said, leather, leather, leather everywhere. And because of that, it feels really high quality. The armrest here is pretty soft too. Then you have some window switches here. You have your control for your side mirrors and you have your door handles. So they're pretty uniquely designed. And normally they do come in aluminum color or a light aluminum trim. These ones are blacked out. So even on this part over here and it looks really good you have some door pockets here which are pretty good amount of size then you have your uh, DBX here logo on the sill plates which are illuminated then the seats themselves you have uh, sport seats as standard you have your Aston Martin embroidery over here and this one because it has the yellow brake calipers you can see how they have brought in that element of color in the stitching as well. So this looks pretty nice and clean because of that. This type of stitching is called brogue stitching. I think it's also a term which is used in uh, making shoes or uh, leather high quality shoes. The seats do look really good. So we'll take that. We'll take a look at that later. Then you have seat controls here, so you can lower your seat. You can push them back. You have your lumbar adjustment and memory seat controls here as well. And also even this side is covered in leather and you have those yellow elements inside. Then in the center console itself, I thought I'll show this to you before I sit inside. So you have your center console here and you have some storage below as well. So you can store some handbags here for your for the ladies or you can keep some other stuff. But you also have a space for your uh, phone and you have a button to open your tailgate. So to, one more thing is that um, on the 2022 model, you have uh, wireless charging available as well. And on the foot pedals itself, you have a nice uh, large dead pedal and you have your brake and throttle. So I think we should take a look inside the car and sit inside. Okay, so I am in the interior of the DBX itself. So first things, let's uh, take a look at the interior quality, which is again 
all leather everywhere and the everywhere you touch it's soft touch leather again you can see a speaker grills cover in leather and this part over here these fins they obviously mimic those fins on the hood itself so they look pretty good so again you have leather all the way down to the glove box as well so let's talk about what else you have in the interior so first things first uh, you have this 10.25 uh, inch uh, screen which will come to later and uh, let's take a look at the digital dis uh, display first so you have your speedometer here you have your uh, tachometer here then you have uh, some controls which i'll show it to you right now just a minute so you have uh, a bit of control which you can use this uh, dial here to control from so right now it's showing range you can see your odometer you can see your fuel consumption you can see your uh, how much uh, how much time the car is switched on then you can also take a look for the other stuff other information then you can using this arrow button here you can shift to this dial and you can again cycle through what you want to see so this shows you a bit more information inside then you can see your navigation showing up here so that's pretty good so that's all the thing actually which i can show over here then what else we have i think i'll just keep it at uh, dbx itself and we'll keep the center part at its uh, odometer so this looks much cleaner then on the steering wheel itself again all leather and you have your uh, 12 o'clock stripe on this side you have your cruise control settings here your lane keeping and your phone controls all on this side of the car i mean on the steering wheel then on this side you have your voice assistant this is for your home then you can again check your trip navigation if you press that home button from here then uh, also your radio media controls are there itself let me just show it to you clearly you have telephone assistance service etc all this stuff so let's just keep it at let's keep it at trip so we'll keep it like that then you have your volume controls here and that's it then you have your aston martin logo in the middle this is the classic aston martin badge it's not the blacked out badge it looks really good then you have your uh, paddle shifters they are pure metal i hope you can hear that so one thing they go all the way uh, down over here let me just show it to you clearly so they move uh, and also they are attached to the column itself and they have a nice clicky feel to them you have your windshield controls on this side you have a steering wheel control here as well as uh, steering wheel heating available on this then on this side you don't have anything else and one more thing i wanted to show is uh, you have your uh, electronic parking brake you have your headlight controls and you have uh, the instrument display control or brightness control here and then you have high quality ac vents which move in, uh, in a good amount of adjustment is available actually on them and they are again blacked out as the aluminum trim over here is then let's come to the center console itself so you have your uh, engine start button and in typical aston martin fashion this is how all of the cars have it so you have uh, parking reverse neutral and drive then you have your infotainment screen now this is not touch screen then you have your ac vents here again you have a lot of adjustment here available then these are your climate control settings so you can adjust your temperature your uh, air direction and your fan speed from here then you have some more air vent or uh, ventilation controls here you have heated seats and you have ventilated seats as well not that we need it over here in saudi arabia though then you have your lock and unlock buttons for your door interestingly it's not on the door it's in the center console itself then you have a nice place to keep your key you can easily keep it here safe and secure then you have your hazard buttons here then you have your drive mode selector so the drive mode selector is like this currently we are in gt mode you can go okay just a minute okay so for the drive mode selectors what i'll do is i'll put up a small video of how the drive mode or the display changes itself when you change the different drive modes and i'll attach it after this so that you have an idea of how that looks then you have your air suspension control here your hill descent control your volume knob is here as well and that looks pretty good then you have your button for switching on and off the screen itself you have your lane keep assist you have your auto start stop you have your parking assist and you have your parking camera if i press that it's not currently switching on you have to start the car for that i'll do that later then the main thing is you have this touchpad here and your rotary control for this so let me just press home and there we go so this is how the screen looks you have your uh, different navigation settings if i click on that you show it shows you a map then you can 
it back here you have your radio media telephone connect system and vehicle on the vehicle one interesting thing is that is an Aston Martin DB5 currently I think it's in the previous version on the MBUX it's not the latest version the latest version does has a touch control of the Mercedes systems not currently on the Aston's maybe in the next year they might bring it uh, to this car and you can go into your vehicle settings so you, from here you can change your climate controls drive modes maybe I can show them to you here you have your in, uh, individual configuration then you have uh, assistance, consumption, light settings. Now in the light settings, you can also change your ambient lighting. So let me just check. So ambient lighting, okay. Currently, I think it's set to something like green or something. I don't know, for some reason it's not showing up. If I do find out where it is, the ambient lighting, I'll put up a small clip again for you. But they do have 64 uh, colors. Then let's go back. We have some more surround lighting, exterior light shut off, extractor, all that controls. Then you have some more vehicle settings. If you click that, you can check your uh, tow away protection, all that stuff. So that's all there is to show in this part. Okay, so then uh, you have your uh, touchpad here and in the middle. Uh, actually, the center console itself, it's in gloss black. But I believe you can get it in carbon fiber or uh, wood also. Uh, if it was... Uh, my configuration i would have definitely gone for this uh, matte or uh, black aluminum trim then uh, you have your cup holders and then you have your armrests now the armrests are pretty soft as well you, but you have another function to them so you can actually extend this out and the passenger can use that armrest over there or the cup holder itself and you can just push this back and then open the armrest so there we go the armrest itself there are some things, obviously this is a new car, so you have an extra key over here. Then you have your 12 volt socket, SD card slot and two USB A's, which also is used for connecting your Apple CarPlay on the screen. Uh, for some reason, they don't have Android Auto. I don't know why, maybe in a future update they might bring it. So that's all the function to show here. Then you have your uh, mirror, which is again frameless. And this is the type of rear view mirror I like the most. Then you have your dome lights. These are touch sensitive now, but currently the door is uh, on, I mean open, so that's why it's showing up like this. Then you have your controls for your uh, panoramic sunroof, which goes all the way to the back. The thing is, uh, you can't open the sunroof itself because it's a big piece of glass and um, that's all there is to show here. Then you have your uh, visors. Now the visors are in Alcantara as well, uh, even the headliner is in Alcantara. I hope you can see that clearly. Also, since this is a bit, uh, the area where I am in currently is a bit dark, I had to keep the uh, sunroof, uh, sunroof open. But the blinds is also in Alcantara. That's something Aston Martin only do. Then interestingly, you have a very small uh, vanity mirror though. So you can only check your eyebrows with this. Then you have another uh, part of the sunroof itself. But uh, this one slides to the... Uh, driver side and blocks uh, the sun from here so uh, something you know, well thought of by Aston Martin the quality do feel uh, feels really nice then you have uh, the door handles up top and they are really high quality they're not those plasticky ones and they feel really good then again you have your uh, glove box so to open the glove box you have to press this button and you can see how nicely damped it is again lined with felt and a nice big opening so that's how you can um, obviously keep your uh, uh, stuff safe and secure. It won't scratch up because of that. So one thing I wanted to show is uh, the reverse parking. So let me just see if I can put it in reverse like this. Okay, I'll show you the camera later. For uh, showcasing the camera, you have to obviously start the car and then showcase that. So I'll do it later. But uh, that's all there is to show on this side of the car and also the interior. So now I think uh, we'll sit in the back seat and take a look at the space over there. Okay, talking about space though, I am pretty comfortable over here at the in the front seat itself. I have it uh, set to my driving position in which I'll be the most comfortable in. And I do have a lot of headroom. Uh, even, uh, even if the blind was um, covered, I would still have a lot of uh, space. That would not be an issue for me. And also generally uh, seeing that um, sitting in the seat, I'm not a small person. I'm a big guy at six foot four, and I feel really comfortable in these seats. And uh, I have plenty of space. 
I can even move the seat a bit more forward if I want to uh, to make uh, a bit more uh, driving comfort for me so that's all in the front now I think we should take a look at the back seat okay so we are uh, taking a look at the back seats again uh, so the back seats uh, do have uh, the same quality of materials as in the front seat or the front door card so you have your window controls some here and you have your uh, door handles here in same uh, blacked out aluminum then what else do we have I think well, you have your uh, illuminated sill plates on this side one thing I like what uh, Aston Martin have done is there is no uh, wheel arch that intrudes into the space uh, before you sit inside so because of that exit and entry is uh, very easy into the Aston Martin so I think we should take a seat inside now okay so this is a bit of a surprise to me now like I said the front driving seat is uh, set to my driving position I am 6 foot 4 or 195 centimeter and I have a good amount of knee room this is something I don't say very often because most of the cars I review don't have that much amount of space for a guy like me so this is uh, pleasing then uh, you have your uh, air vents on this side as well so you can have a bit of an airflow towards you and stay cool in summer heat one interesting thing is again they have uh, brought the high quality door handles over here as well and despite the front seat being a bit wide and you have some space here from where you can annoy the driver if you want to but uh, overall you have a good amount of uh, visibility from here as well and it does look really good so this is a bit of an idea of how the cockpit looks for you then at the behind the seat backs actually again they're all in leather feels really high quality and for some reason Aston Martin I don't know why but they have given a very small door pocket you can barely keep anything in it and it's very tight but I believe I think it's just for an aesthetic purpose so that's done now the seats itself at the back obviously they're not the body hugging seats in the front but they are very nicely designed you have your embroidery here with the Aston Martin logo right over here again you have that yellow element which uh, comes from the brake calipers and you have that uh, same brogue stitching that is uh, available on the front seats as well then in the center itself you have your uh, this thing has a three zone climate control so you can control your fan speed from here your temperature your uh, seat heating is available and as well as seat ventilation then you have your lock and unlock again for the doors rear doors available here and the AC vents are again the same high quality ones as you get everywhere in the front and also on this side as well then you have uh, two USB A's as well and though even though the center console or center tunnel is a bit high up uh, you have a lot of space to keep your foot inside so because of that three people can sit so that will be you guys will be comfortable here because it is very comfortable at the back here even though you cannot recline the seat or bring it front or back you have a lot of headroom here again like I said this is something I don't say very often so you should take my word for it uh, a lot of space if uh, you are below six foot four or even below six feet you will be easily comfortable in this SUV so that's something to note about then what else in terms of features we have is an armrest so let me just pull that down and okay so this is something I am not a fan of is uh, cup holders which are seated or uh, situated like this because oftentimes they do come into your uh, elbow space but uh, if I sit comfortably in my normal position my hand does not naturally fall into the cup holders and one more thing you can just see how soft this armrest is so you will be pretty comfortable back here too so that's all there is to show in the back seat of the Aston Martin I hope you enjoyed it a lot so let me just uh, take a step out of this vehicle and let's go ahead with the conclusion of the video okay guys so that was the video on the Aston Martin DBX hope you enjoyed it a lot and if you did let me know in the comments below what parts of the video you did enjoy uh, if there's anything else you you would like me to try out in the videos uh, different type of styles etc and I am also currently on Instagram if you want to follow me there uh, do consider doing that I am uh, I'll be putting down the link uh, to my account in the description below I do post uh, the Instagram reels and also uh, different uh, photographs of the cars I make a video on so do head there and check out the account and uh, also do like the video do comment on it as I said before 
and also do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well so that you'll be the first ones to know when i upload the latest videos so thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video bye bye